<laughs> oh, oh, it didn't. Uh, it, uh, oh. it didn't work. Not precisely. Anyway, that was. It was meant to, it was meant to be a bit of a trick with the microphone muff. Didn't quite work out, but I'm not doing it all again. That's for sure. The, the best laid plans and all that type of thing. We've got something a little bit different for you today, and it's not going to be me hiding behind an old grey muff again. No. We're going to talk about Grady D and Garner. We are going to talk about... Uh, well, Mike's going to talk about Grady D and Garner as well, so that makes two of us. We have got some talking pigeons, courtesy of Canon Town Len. We're going to find out what David Moyes would have looked like had he not been a football manager, but instead they decided to be an actress and got the role of Daenerys Targaryen in Game of Thrones, which is the, the, the content you want, clearly. I'm going to give you something to do on Thursday night, which is something that all West Ham fans should tune in for and I think will enjoy. It's not even on this channel. I'm plugging someone else's channel, such is my benevolent nature. And um, and then I'll probably at the end I'll probably say goodbye. I think there's I think there's ten minutes worth of stuff, isn't it? I think so. I think so. I know you you just you just killing time until you see what David Moyes would look like as the nearest Targaryen. Clearly, but anyway, we've already spoken for one minute and twenty five seconds without mentioning Grady D and Garner. Actually, I have twice, but we mentioned him again, Grady D and Garner for the fourth time. He needs a cuddle. He needs some reassurance. Grady Dean Garner has, has said he's happy to pledge his allegiance to West Ham. He's happy to stay here for next season and, and thereafter if he can receive some assurances of first-team football. Now, I do choose my words carefully. So I'm not, I think he's demanding guarantees, start me or else, but assurances. Now... Under normal circumstances, I would not be in agreement that any manager should, should bend to the whims of an individual player. I think you've got to earn your place and, you know, if you run hard, you get in the team. If you perform, you keep the shirt and so on and so forth. You've got to prove yourself and you've got to play well. And I say normal circumstances, but I don't think these are normal circumstances. And I'll just explain why. What Grady Dean Garner needs, I said a cuddle, but I mean an arm round, a little reach around or something like that, something pleasant, to let him know that he's loved, to let him know that he's appreciated, and to let him know that he does have a future and a present at West Ham, and I think the present is the key. He needs to feel in the moment that he's wanted, that he's needed, and that he's part of the plans. There's, I've seen nothing about the lad that suggests that he'll demand to be starting every week. But you see, what I've just described is what he has with Billich. Billich is that arm around, arm around. It's, that's two players, isn't it, clearly? But the arm around the player. Uh, Billich will make him feel wanted. I don't need to tell you anything about Stefan Billich. We all know exactly what he's like. He's a good guy. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy to be around. And... You get the impression his team talks. He's saying, you, you, are my, you are the number one guy. You're the best winger in the league. Come out and prove it, and so on and so forth. And I'm pretty sure that Bilic would tell him, you know, you're going to be a mainstay of this team in the Premier League, and tell him all the things he wants to hear. So Dean Garner will probably feel that if he were to go to West Brom, he would get 30 games a season. You know, something like that. He didn't always start for West Brom, that has to be said. But I think they've just signed up Pereira, who I think is, is their best player, by the way. And um, they've signed him up on a permanent deal. So they had a pretty damn good partnership as well. They seemed to instinctively know what each other was going to do. So that is going to be alluring to Dean Garner. It's certainly going to give him something that he, he not, doesn't necessarily have at West Ham. So if he goes to West Brom, he's going to feel that he knows where he's going to fit in the team. He's going to know what his role is. At West Ham, not so, not so much. Not so much. So I, I do feel in this particular instance that David Moyes probably does need to say to him, look, you are part of the plans. You are going to play. And that's if he's going to play him. If he's not going to play him, then maybe he's just going to sell him. But I, I don't know. I do. The longer it goes on, I do worry more and more that this is perhaps where our money's going to come from. If we're going to generate any money. We've all seen the for sale sign being hung around. It's a Diop's neck. And we've made it public knowledge that, that he is for sale. And it's not... Normally when things aren't true in the news, then what will happen is one of one, one of the people at the top, one of the top sources, let's say, 
will contact Clara and Hugh, somebody like that, and they'll say the story is not true. I think what is interesting is we've not heard that about Diop. So the Diop 45 million price tag, no one's come out and said, oh, that's not true. That's not true. So I take it to mean it's true, basically. Um, the longer that drags on, though, and the longer we can't shift the players that we want to shift, that we've discussed a million times before, the more I worry about Dian Garner, the more I worry about the Dian Garner money. Being, I say the Dian Garner money, that being the only way of us generating any revenue and being able to bring the players in that David Moyes wants to. So, a cuddle, yes. Uh, probably not a kiss, but let him know that he's wanted, let him know that he's in the plans, let him know that he's needed, and um, and let's see uh, what Mike, I think he's in that, I'm going to look to, this is going to be a bad edit if I get this wrong, I think, uh, let's, let's hear what Mike has got to say about Grady and Ghana. Mike. In my opinion, the best three attacking wide players in the championship last season, and I watched a fair bit of it, uh, were uh, Janet Bowen, uh, Grady Dean Garner and the guy Ben Rama over at Brentford. Uh, and um, we've got two of them. Uh, we've been playing. Janet Bowen's just been a real success since arriving at West Ham at Christmas and, uh, or in January. And we've, ne we've already got Grady Dean Garner. Now, I saw him a number of times playing for West Brom. And you know what? He wasn't just the best West Brom player, best player on the pitch, that, and probably the best, one of the very, very best players I saw in all of the championship football. It's a fair bit of it, so I like the championship that I saw last season. Selling him to me would be insane. Who are you gonna, what are you going to do? Replace him with a really good player from the championship, which is David Models, David Moyes' model. That's hard to say. And, um, at all. Uh, or you're just not going to replace him. And that just be lunacy, because that means the only real left winger we have is Antonio. Let's forget um, our man Fornals, who was really playing there to makeshift. Uh, the problem with that is, is Antonio going to play every game and not be injured, which he's failed to kind of do for a number of seasons now. Also, what happens if Haller gets injured and he's prone to an injury as well? In that case, the obvious front striker to take over is Antonio. You get the idea that we'll need someone to play on the, that left wing. Also, what happens if anything happens to Jared Bowen? Um, because Dean Garner can also play on the right. It would be stupid to get rid of him. And I'll tell you another big reason to be stupid to sell him is because if we play him and keep him, yeah, and play him, He'll be worth a lot more when the money's back in the league, assuming the money does come back to the league. Anyway, Dean Garner, really good prospect. Keep him, play him. Over to Gonzo. Thanks, Mike. Hey, that works. That worked well, right? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there you go. That's what Mike thinks about Grady Dean Garner. After he sent me that, after Mike sent me that, he said, Ah, oh, I forgot to mention the pace. I know you like to talk about the pace. Well, I do. But it's been mentioned now, so I won't talk about it. What I will talk about, just quickly, before we get on to the bit that you've all been waiting for, is on Thursday night, Russ, in conjunction with the Newham Food Banks, is running a fundraiser. Now, all the details are below for a GoFundMe, and it is for the Newham Food Banks. Now, when I say a fundraiser, it's going to be a bit of entertainment. It's on Thursday night. On Russ's channel, My Hammers Eleven. If you remember, I was on with Russ, and I chose the um, I chose my favourite ever West Ham Eleven. So he's doing. He's got Ryan Archer on there from West Ham Fan TV. He's got a load of other people on there. Canon Sound Lens doing some stuff. It's going to be an evening of, of West Ham stuff. You think he's got a mystery player who's? I, 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 was, I was just about to. I was just about to try and sound like I know. I don't know. I don't know, because it's a mystery, so I don't know who the mystery player is. So he's got a lot of West Ham stuff going on. They want to raise funds for Newham Food Bank. And I just want to say, without going on about it too much, it is something I've said before, it is a charity that's close to my heart because, oh, I don't know, three, four years ago, it's sooner, it seems more recent than it probably was, but I've had to use food banks myself. So it's... Um, look, it gets a lot of stick. Food banks get a lot of stick. People use food banks as a political tool. Um... But I tell you what, when you're skin and you've got no grub, when we used to get tickets, we used to get a ticket and we'd, you'd have to go down there and then you'd go and queue up. And then what it'd be like a trolley, you'd take a trolley round basically and, and they would help you fill up your trolley and you'd have your non-perishables and your perishables. And 
I'll tell you what, when you got home without food, you were buzzing. It, it was it was a good day to get all your stuff in the food bank. You'd be able to plan out your meals for the, for the week, two weeks, come back with bags of stuff. Um, the cupboards were empty. The cupboards are now full. Food banks are a good thing. And now, more than ever. So if you can go on there, contribute, you can do it... Um, Say your name, you can do it anonymously. You can leave a message. I'll tell you what, if you leave a message underneath, it might be worth saying to Russ on his channel that you thought Gonzo's 11 was the best 11 of, of all of all the Hammers 11s, because I do think mine was the, undoubtedly the best. So that's Thursday night. The details are in the comments below. Do you know what? It's just going to be a good, a good bit of entertainment for West Ham fans over on Russia's channel. Go and give it a look. Anyway, David Moyes as Daenerys Targaryen. I am Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen, of the blood of old Valyria. I am the dragon's daughter. And that's the type of content you want to see. Never have I seen Daenerys Targaryen, Queen of Dragons. Is that what they call her, Queen of Dragons? This Queen of Dragons. Looking ravishing there. But as, as, a, as a Moisey Targaryen always says to the dragons, if you don't fly, you don't play. Similar as that. He only ever plays one dragon up front, though. Um, before I do go and leave you with uh, the pigeons, wherever they go, um, I've not spoken about uh, Stuart Pearce today for very good reason. And that's because I'm going to speak about him tonight on the mug of tea, which is just... A mug is bigger than a cup, more robust than a cup. Better, better, better handle on a mug. So myself and Gio will be discussing that on the Patreon channel this evening, and uh, I will be back tomorrow, and I'll have a few more words to say about it on this channel tomorrow. I don't think I'm giving anybody any spoilers if I say that I am pleased uh, that Stuart Pearce has returned to West Ham. I think it's fair to say that. Right. Without any further delay, Len, pigeons, please. Good to uh, stretch your wings and take in a match around here, eh, fellas? You what, mate? I said it's uh, good to take in a match these days around here. What's good to you? Well, it's, uh, it's just good chance for us pigeons and that. We're real pigeons, mate. Pigeon pigeons. Yes, I'm a pigeon. No, mate, you're a wood pigeon. You're not a real pigeon. I mean, yeah, but I'm a pigeon, right? Tell you what, though. When they had the biggest show on earth down there, I wouldn't have minded being a dove that summer, eh? They got all the birds. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. We like birds. We like all birds. We like all birds. I'm sorry. I, I'm a bird, too. We don't like doves, though. Oh, no. Don't start us on doves. All white, enchanted and peaceful. Don't even start thinking about you and doves flying over this place. This place is for real pigeons. But I am a real pigeon. What do you know about being a real pigeon? Well, I thought you would consider my pigeon sensitivities. I get fucking shot at and eaten. You don't. You're a real pigeon, mate. All berries and grain. And succulents. Leave us to me, Dad. We're all shit chips and stale bread here. Tell you what, though. Those chips and stale bread, eh? Pucker up a pallet or two. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got the stale bread gig. You steer clear of stale bread. And if I'll see you so much as tweet or coo about stale bread... But, but, I am a pigeon. The, the, the bread comes from the grain for my manor. Eh, manor? Eh, manor? Eh, manor? Where the bleeding hell did you learn that phrase from? Eh, manor. Real pigeons. Like them crows at the tower. They're ravens! Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Only a blackbird can name another blackbird, mate. What can I call them, then? The Queen's birds? Eh, Dear you. For God's sake, we're all just birds, aren't we? Yeah, but you're not a real pigeon. You're a wood pigeon. And we've told all the real pigeons round here that your type of pigeon ain't wanted. And not to tweet or coo about wood pigeons. Or doves. <laughs> the starlings can fuck off as well. <laughs> <laughs>